Hello, hello, good evening. Richard, aka Rich Charizard, here once again for another unboxing video, this time of Innistrad Crimson Val Commander deck Vampiric Bloodline. Will your opponents finally weep tears of blood? Let's open this and find out. Actually, I'm kind of excited to do this unboxing because I recently purchased a new uh, phone stand which hangs overhead. So now I have a uh, freer space in front of me. So guys, let's uh, begin uh, with this. Um, it still retains the old package from like uh, two, co two to three commander sets in the past. It's still a bit chubby. Uh, no more plastic, so that's good. And it still has that uh, easy to pull tab in the bottom. So, yep. We can only do this in one take. There's an easy to pull cardboard thing here. Oh, it just popped out. <laughs> Seems like it wants to go out immediately. They still have these uh, tokens, which you can use as uh, victory confetti. Uh, so yeah Also could be a divider This is the deck box it uh, features another art of Strefan more progenitor Let's uh, I, I really love this cardboard deck box. It's pretty compact and uh, If you remove this white thing here and sleeve up all the cards uh, You can still fit all of them though. I doubt you can fit everything if you double sleeved everything. It still comes with a spin down life counter that goes up to 40. 40 on one side, 20 on the other side. Okay, so here are the cards. Again, you always have the insert which uh, shows you a bit of uh, lore about the commander. Strephon, more progenitor. So if you want to pause right here and read, go ahead. And this gives you a bit of an idea on how to play the deck. If you haven't uh, played Commander yet and you want to try out here are the rules, it uh, basically provides you enough detail on how to start. So yeah. Okay, let's uh, move on to the unboxing. Okay, so here, they still have the... Instead of the oversized cards, they have the harder version of the cards, which is uh, a bit sturdy, yeah. You can't really bend this. And uh, I think uh, most of the time, this is what I used to play as the commander in the field already. And I just keep the uh, actual card in the binder. I guess the problem is uh, if there would be an effect that would, uh, I don't know, like shuffle your commander in the deck. But you can always opt to put it back in the command zone. Okay, so let's begin. Strephon, more progenitor. Okay. Another legendary creature that you, well, you can't use this as a commander to helm the deck because it's only uh, black. Timothar, Baron of Bats, and I think we pulled him in one of our past videos already. Okay, Blood Artist. This is one of the reprints. Bloodline Necromancer, Falcon Rat Noble, Feed the Swarm, Indulgent Aristocrat, Knight's Whisper. I think this is one of the better reprints as well. Well, uh, looking at the price, this costs like around two dollars now i think so it's a nice reprint rakish air stencia masquerade vandal blast another reprint rakdos charm star stromker 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 captain again arcane signet always a nice reprint always manages to climb back up to its uh, two dollar price soaring also Swiftfoot Boots, um, a nice artifact to protect your Strephon Mar Progenitor. 
we'll kind of discuss uh, the cards later on Stable Obelisk. Eh? The lands are also a bit better this time around. And yep, all of those are swamps and mountains. So let's open up the other pack, shall we? I already see new cards. Well, Timothar is one of those new cards. You have a bat token in the back. And Crossway Troublemakers. Okay, this is a nice card because it buffs your attacking vampires, giving them death touch and lifelink. So blocking your vampires would be <laughs> more, well, your vampires would be more threatening and your opponents will be less uh, tempted to block them. Whenever a vampire you control dies, you may pay two life if you do, uh, do draw a card. So can potentially, well, if they're ge getting lifelink anyway, you'd be getting lots, lots of life and uh, you can draw a card though, in the event that a uh, board wipe occurs. By the time you'd have lots of uh, life anyway. Glass cast heart. That looks pretty creepy and macabre. And whenever one or more vampires you control attack, create a blood token. Okay, so blood token is a theme of this deck. Because uh, when you use Trefan, when he attacks, you can sacrifice uh, two blood tokens. If you do, you may put a vampire card from your hand into the battlefield, tapped and attacking. It gains indestructible until end of turn. So you can pre put pretty big vampires here. Uh, such a, This one is an example. Then all your vamp uh, creatures will, attacking creatures will suddenly get death touch and lifelink. Camber the Plunder. Uh, he has a. Uh, this is one of the partner commanders in this deck. Um, we're gonna find the other one later. Uh, if he partners with the other one, they can helm the deck. But yeah, guys, you gain one life again. This is a good uh, board wipe for at least for this deck. Predator's Hour. I I I know this has some kind of value. Shadow Grange Archfiend. Arterial arc Alchemy. Oh, this looks cool. They're using blood as weapons. Kinda reminds me of the anime... What do you call that? Uh, Dead Man Wonderland, I think. Imposing Grandeur. Not uh, really a good card for me because you wouldn't like to give your opponents the opportunity to draw more cards. And it's a me. So they can opt not to do it. Oh, this is one of the partners I was talking about. So they both partner, Camber and Loreen. Problem is, Loreen's not a vampire. And she has this um, gold mechanic. I can see retaining Camber in the deck and cutting Loreen. So we're going to show cards later that uh, will be most likely cut. Or I would suggest cutting from the deck. Markov and Forcer. Scion of Opulence. Sinister Revolts. And the Wander Ruin Sage. Blood Lord of Vaskoth. Okay. Cordial Vampire. Oh, uh, okay. I, I was glad this was reprinted. Because, um, yeah, if this wasn't repeated, yeah, this was a, will skyrocket on price. Whenever this a card or another creature dies, again, even the opponent's creatures die, uh, put a 1-1 counter in each vampire control. Very perfect for a vampire tribal deck. Damnable pack. Okay, one of the better reprints. I think this... Oh, no, no, not this one. Uh, yeah. There, it's Nirkana Revenant, yeah. This is the better reprint. Uh, I think this is still $5 right now. Pa Patron of the Vein. Uh, this one was creeping in price when uh, this deck was teased. But uh, I was glad this was reprinted in this deck or else this would also skyrocket in the price. Again, they have uh, hefty prices. But with Strafan at the helm, they, they he can potentially put these on the field uh, very early. Sanctum Seeker. Stromkirk Condemned. 
Discard a card, Vampire Secret Troll, get plus one plus one until end of turn. I think this would be better off in a Anya deck. A reprint from the Anya deck in the past. Seems like uh, Madness uh, made it into this deck as well. Blasphemous, uh, Blasphemous Act, one of the best uh, board wipes in red. Bloodsworn Steward. Oh, okay. So I guess if you have this on board, Strafan can uh, immediately attack already. Crimson Honor Guard. Could uh, be nice for incidental damage. Each vampire card you own that isn't on the battle has madness. Oh, okay. But we don't really have much discard synergy in this deck. Hmm. Mob rule. I can see this getting cut. Molten Echoes. Storm Kirk Occultist. Has madness again. Vampiric Dragon. Hmm. Okay. It can ping uh, the smaller creatures. It gets big. But yeah, look at that hefty cost. Good thing Strafan is there. And uh, more lands. Oh, okay. These are the better lands. <laughs> oh, and you get a lot of blood tokens because you'll be making lots of them. Okay, so that's the deck, Vampiric Bloodline. So what are my thoughts? Mm, well, this uh, deck really uh, plays with the blood token strategy or has a blood token synergy. So you would want more cards that would uh, get you blood tokens. So cards that you could add potentially, I'll show them in a while. The top five cards that uh, I would like to add to this deck to be able to create more blood tokens so that Strafan can use them eventually is number one, Cryptolith Fragment. So Cryptolith Fragment is a three mana artifact, which is also a mana rock. It enters the battlefield tap, and at the beginning of your upkeep, if each player has 10 or less life, transform Cryptolith Fragment and it becomes the Aurora of Emrakul with flying and death touch. Whenever this card attacks, each opponent loses 3 life, but uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, what would really matter is the tap ability. You get mana, and each player, well, including you, loses 1 life. It'll be okay because Strefan, at the end of the. at the beginning of your end step, you create blood tokens for each player who lost life this turn. So, if it includes you, you'd be potentially getting 4 blood tokens during your end step. The second card that I would be adding would be Anye, Made of Dishonor. Wow, the value really tanked on this one. Uh, but whenever Anye, Made of Dishonor, and or one or more other vampires enter the battlefield under your control, remember, this is Vampire Tribal, so you have lots of uh, vampires, you create a blood token. But this ability only triggers once each turn. We can pay two to sacrifice another creature or a blood token, and each opponent loses two life and you gain 2 life, potentially netting you 3 blood tokens at the beginning of your end step if Strafan, Master Progenitor, is on the battlefield. The card I would like to add uh, comes from the Crimson Vow set as well is Olivia's Attendance. It's a 6-6 six, six vampire creature for a 4 and a red and a red with menace, and whenever this card deals damage, create that many blood tokens. So, if this connects with your opponent, 6 damage, you create 6 blood tokens. Also, it has this ability, a 2 and a red. Olivia's Attendance deals 1 damage to any target. So with that ability, it doesn't need to be combat damage, just any type of damage. Also, this has a pseudo form of evasion in the form of menace. So most of the time, this could really connect with an opponent and you'll get 6 blood tokens out of it. The fourth card I would like to add is Reckless Fireweaver. Well, it's not a vampire. It's a human artificer. A 1-3 for a 1 in a red. But whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, Reckless Fireweaver deals 1 damage to each opponent. Imagine, if you connect with Olivia's Attendance, you deal 6 damage. 
six blood tokens come into play, which are incidentally artifacts as well. Then Reckless Fire Weaver deals one damage for each of those blood tokens that enters the battlefield. So potentially doing six damage to all of your opponents and uh, well, six damage from the Olivia's attendants to that other opponent who got smacked in the face. So lots of value there. This can easily drain your opponents for a lot. So I would consider adding this even if it's not a vampire. The last card I would like to add is Leech Ridden Swamp. It's a swamp that comes into play tap, but it has a nice ability wherein you pay black and you tap it and each opponent loses one life. So this could potentially net you three blood tokens. You can only play this ability only if you control two or more black permanents, but yeah, it's uh, kind of easy to activate this or fulfill the requirement to do so. These are my top five cards to cut from the deck once you open it. Uh, Stromkirk Condemned. I think this would better serve a deck that has uh, madness as a mechanic. Um, and we're not really going down that route. And you can only activate this only once each turn. And the buff only lasts until end of turn. It would be better if it uh, gave counters instead. So yeah, uh, we're cutting this from the deck. The next card is Unstable Obelisk. It's a 3 mana artifact for... yeah, you can use this to tap for a colorless mana. And the 7 costing ability doesn't really do it for me. You need to sacrifice this to just destroy that target permanent. It's kind of slow and it seems to be a liability as well. I would change... Um, this for Cryptolith Fragment. Imposing Grandeur, as mentioned a while ago, I wouldn't like to give an opponent an advantage, especially if he or she has a crappy hand. So, yeah, I don't like it. Also, it costs a lot to play in Sorcery Speed. Anya's Ravager is the fourth card that I would uh, most likely cut from this deck because it, well this attacks each combat if able and when uh, this attacks discard your hand and draw three cards yeah you're able to wheel your deck but uh, you wouldn't really uh, like to do that um, and the fact that it attacks each combat if able means that it, it most of the time it will become a li liability for you and the last cut would be Lorene the Diversion uh, well, we'll divert her from this deck because, yeah, one, you're not a vampire. Mm, yeah, first strike, which is an uh, okay ability. And yeah, it has that gold mechanic. But though we need to sacrifice an artifact creature to be able to do that. And our deck is not really going that gold route. I think this would be better in other decks such as your Karazikar, etc, etc. So, yep, we're cutting her, but we're keeping her partner. So those are my additions and my cuts. Uh, what would you add to the deck? What would you cut in the deck? Do you agree with my picks? Let me know. So there you have it. Is it worth it to buy this commander deck? Well, if you try to build this deck piece by piece or buy every single card, according to MTG Goldfish, it would take you around $65. I'm looking at the website now of uh, TCG Player. And if I try to build this deck, I'm already at $88.46 and uh, I am still missing 11 cards. If I try to build this in Card Kingdom, I'm already at $71.77 and I'm still missing a hell lot of cards. Uh, most of them are out of stock as well. I got this uh, deck for $38, so yeah. It's a very valuable deck. Uh, lots of value is what I meant to say. And if you're a new commander player, commander precons are always a nice start because they have lots of value and they have lots of notable reprints. But if you're a long-time commander player and you would just like the reprints on this deck, I would suggest you just buy the singles for that one. If you're into Vampire Tribal, this could be a nice place to start building that tribe. So what are your thoughts about the deck? Let me know down below. If you have any questions, feel free to ask and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. Anyway, this is Richard aka Richard Sard once again signing out. See you in the next video. Goodbye!